go over um, a topic today that uh, I really think all respiratory therapists, nurses, and anybody who has, might have a patient who's on um, corticosteroids should know uh, about the use of corticosteroids. So, talk a little bit about um, some of you are familiar with this. HPA axis, so a really important concept uh, when uh, treating patients that are on corticosteroids um, and then educating patients on that. So the HPA axis has uh, three components to it. The uh, hypo, hypothalamus, pituitary gland, peak, and the adrenal gland and adrenal cortex. So three different aspects to this HPA uh, axis. So special shout out to my endocrinology uh, professor at Indiana State University, Dr. Hughes, uh, brought all this stuff together many, many years ago, probably upwards of 20 years ago for me. Um, but honestly, it didn't make sense, so I started tre treating patients uh, clinically and diving more into it. So let me explain this real quick and why we care about this as healthcare workers or as frontline uh, clinicians with our COPD patients, asthmatics, anybody that's getting oral corticosteroids. So uh, let's draw some structures first. And if you know, I'm really poor at drawing, but I'm going to choose to take my best, my best shot today for this. So uh, let's start with uh, a poorly drawn brain here. So we have a brain, we have a brain stem, looks somewhat familiar, stuff going on here. Let's find the hypothalamus and the pituitary glands inside of here. So, uh, pituitary gland is a little small gland in the center of the brain, and then the hypothalamus is a region above it. So, um, so pituitary gland and then the hypothalamus. So, let's blow it up over here. It's gonna look something like, not exactly, but something like this. It has two lobes to it, so this is your gland and then above this is that structure I'm just gonna draw a square I'm sure it's not square but it's a structure of cells that is the hypothalamus okay, so hypothalamus is lies above it so it kind of is a expanded version of that right there so then if we're gonna go down and then I'm gonna draw a couple kidneys and they may not even look like kidneys but um, this is how I draw kidneys. Um, so here's our kidneys, and on top of these kidneys is going to be this area. That's the adrenal gland on both, top of both, both of those. So you have your adrenal gland, your cortex. Um, they all, the really cool thing about this system is it is an axis, so it's constantly secreting different uh, chemicals. I'm going to talk about those chemicals to regulate the other one. And it's amazing how the body can do this. It's got a constant system of one um, endocrine um, gland talking to another uh, through chemicals, and they can regulate the body to maintain homeostasis. So let's talk about how this works and where, where our, uh, our corticosteroids come into this. Um, I'm generically going to use the term uh, prednisone uh, because that is the, the oral steroid that you're going to see the most often. So. Uh, the hypothalamus, it secretes a chemical called CRF, uh, corticotropin, uh, uh, I'll make sure I get this correct, corticotropin release factor, I, I always knew it was CRH, corticotropin release hormone. But let's say that's secreted out. I'm gonna draw that as little circles. So that's secreted from the hypothalamus. And we're gonna talk about what regulates that. Comes down here, and this is actually the, there's two parts, two main lobes to the pituitary gland. We're mainly gonna talk about the anterior lobe, anterior, and we have the posterior, which controls a bunch of other, other aspects. We're gonna talk about anterior today. So this is gonna come on the anterior aspect, the, Cartotropin releasing hormone comes in, it's going to stimulate release from this area of ACTH. 
So this is uh, adrenocorticotropin, um, adrenocorticotropin hormone. So ACTH, adrenocorticotropin hormone. So it's released from here to here. This is out in the bloodstream, of course. So it's going in the bloodstream everywhere. It's going to interact with these bad boys here. So the adrenal, adrenal glands on top of the kidneys. So we have hypothalamus, CRF, anterior pituitary releases ACTH in the blood. It gets to the, to the um, adrenal cortex and then they release back into the system. I'm gonna put it over here. Can you see that on the video? I wanna make sure you can. Yes. So um, they're gonna release out here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say generically cortisol. I mean, it can be uh, many different things, but cortisol is kind of the most generic um, uh, term for it. So this is naturally, of course, naturally produced by the adrenal glands in the body. Um, and you need this in your body to maintain many different functions. So your body wants to regulate the levels of cortisol. So we need to regulate this. So what happens is these levels of cortisol, as they go through the bloodstream, feed back to the hypothalamus. And that's how this whole system works. So it causes negative feedback. back to the hypothalamus, which control release of CRF. So, this is what happens. If, if this level gets high, it's gonna cause negative feedback to the hypothalamus, actually. In most cases, you shut the hypothalamus down. It's gonna stop producing CRF. It's gonna stop stimulating the, inter, the pituitary to release ACTH. And then it's gonna stop the production of cortisol from um, glucocorticoids, uh, cortisol from the adrenal cortex. So it works in a big circle like that. If this level gets low, then it would, you'd increase your CRF and then it would start pumping out more to get it to a normal level. And the body's just constantly in regulation to maintain homeostasis that way. Now, where we throw in a big wrench, and we have to do it because it's a great type of medication to treat our patients, is when we add, I want to put in this case, prednisone, okay, so that's um, a glucocorticoid medication. So endogenous here, exogenous here, the body doesn't know the difference. So we put this into the system in cases mainly to reduce inflammation with exacerbations of lung disease. So it's gonna reduce inflammation in the lumen of the airway, cause the airways become larger, and then therefore help gas exchange down at the alveolar level and it's gonna help a lot of different things, but I mean, this is a great medication. When we put them on what's called a tapering dose. So a uh, tapering dose is you start out with, let's say, this is just generically, uh, six, one. So this is a tapering dose, how many you're gonna take each day. So this would be day one. This is, this is kind of generic, because it's not actually two, three, four, five, six, so day six. So, you're going to start with a lot of a lot of a high dosage of it, a lot of pills or high dosage of it, and you're going to go down over time. So whenever prednisone is given, it's given a tapering dose. You don't ever want to stop early. You don't ever want to stop right here. It's a, it's bad news, and we'll, I'm going to talk about that in just a second. So what's going to happen with that? So when we start taking oral prednisone, what it does is it causes negative feedback back to the hypothalamus, and essentially because the hypothalamus doesn't know cortisol versus cortisol first prednisone, so it's actually gonna shut down the hypothalamus. You're gonna have decrease in this, you're gonna have a big decrease in this, you might not even have any cortotropin releasing factor coming out. And so then the adrenal cortex says, I'm taking a break, because I've got, there's enough floating around the system that we're doing really well at this point. So that's this time where we're increasing and what, you know, all the different things that uh, prednisone does, it breaks down uh, glycogen stores, it increases somebody's glucose. It causes, it's a lot of negative effects, but then a lot of positive effects too. But we're really trying to get the patient through a hump of where they're really, or, or you mean, not really, not really a hump. Kind of uh, when they're they start to get worse, we're trying to hit them early before they go down too low. So actually, we're trying to get them through a dip in in their health right there. So we'd like to hit them with something early to kind of improve this, so they don't dip down to this these uh, areas in their healthcare. We kind of. Um, where we term as swirly in the drain when they're not doing really well down there as far as their lung health or their oxygenation and ventilation factors. So we try to hit them early with this with this um, 
IV, um, IM, PO steroids um, to help them out quite a bit with the system. The problem is, is, is that when we put them on oral steroids, you have to taper the dose. Because if you go in and they take a couple days of it, they're gonna feel better. Patients always feel better. They've gotta finish the entire thing because what happens is when they take this first few days, it shuts down the hypothalamus. Hypothalamus says, we're good. So, so if on the third day or the fourth day, you don't take, your med take that medication, your hypothalamus isn't functioning and you're gonna have a crash. And this crash is real similar to, you're gonna feel like, you know, it almost is, is causing you to have Addison's disease where you have a decrease or lack of a super low amount of cortisol floating around your body. You're gonna feel terrible. You're gonna have like body aches. Um, I, I, my personal feeling is it probably is what it feels like to die. I mean, right before you, right before you die, this is probably what in, in a lot of cases, unless you're, you're medicated well, probably what it feels like as your body starts to shut down because you no longer have this exogenous coming in from taking orally and your system hasn't totally restarted yet. It'll take a couple days to restart and I mean, it could cause, cause you to feel sick, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, just everything bad. I'm mean, just, you're just gonna feel terrible as this system kicks back in because it takes a little bit of time. So the goal is, is that you start with a high dose, you give yourself a big boost, then you taper down. As you're tapering down here, on these days you're tapering, 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 the system is getting feedback to it and the hypothalamus says, okay, our levels are getting low again. We're gonna start kicking this in. So it's gonna release CRF, anterior pituitary, ACTH, adrenal glands, it's gonna produce its own back to the cortisol, so you have a combination of both of them in the system, and you're regulated at a specific amount. Same thing happens with somebody who takes uh, prednisone daily, which, um, or any kind of, any kind, kind of a steroid daily. You're gonna see this, um, there you're shutting down some aspects of your body that are hormone regulated. And uh, you see this with people that take uh, steroids for their, um, maybe some of the Crohn's disease, maybe for their arthritis and all these different things, you're really shutting these things down. So whenever you come off of those medications that are like cortisol or glucocorticoids, you have to go slow. Now, the one caveat to this is, and we'll get this asked a lot in respiratory medicine is, well, what about inhaled corticosteroids? Because we do a lot of it, budesonide, ticazone, omedazone, all those different inhaled corticosteroids. Well, the, do the great thing about those, the dosages for those are so low, it's not really gonna mess a lot with this HPA axis. I mean, it might be just a little bit, but it's not enough that you're gonna, you're gonna feel it if you come off of those. Now, we always say that you're spo supposed to stay on these. Inhaled corticosteroids are so much different because they go straight to the tissue and they work right at the tissue. Yeah, you're gonna get a little bit of systemic effect, but you're not gonna get the systemic effect that you're getting if you're getting IM, um, IV, IM, or PO. You're not gonna get those type of effects. So not worry much as much about shutting down the HPA axis with inhaled corticosteroids, but oral definitely, IM, and IV, those are all ones we have to really watch out for um, because they will have a crash. I mean, they will definitely crash, feel really bad, have all those negative symptoms, even might cause you to feel so bad you need to go to the hospital when it's just your system hasn't restarted it yet. So really important as therapists, nurses, physicians, uh, whoever you are, to tell your patients about this tapering dose because it's not just like you're gonna save some steroid, steroid tablets for later. You do not, you cannot do that because your body needs to come back to normal before you stop those. And so it's gotta slowly, both systems have to come together so that you can go back totally on your HPA axis and start regulating that again normally. So a really cool thing I won't talk about today, but if you get tumors in these different areas that secrete these different hormones, they can cause so many different things in your body. That's, that's the study of endocrinology, uh, which is a lecture beyond lectures. Uh, it would probably go on forever. We'd burn up on my, on my space on my phone, but, uh, and I don't really know enough about it to, to speak about it in an educated way. Uh, but anyway, this is the HPA axis. We talk about it in respiratory pharmacology, but I think it really converts to a lot of respiratory medicine and any kind of pulmonary medicine that, when your patients can be taking a tapering dose. It's good to know, just don't tell them, hey, you just need to taper your dose. You're gonna get people, you're gonna get professors sometimes, like, why? 
You want to know the why in what you're saying. I think it's so important for us as healthcare workers, especially specialists in, a, in an area like a respiratory therapist or a pulmonologist or um, a nurse that works in pulmonology to know these areas really well. So if you're asked these questions, you can back it up with scientific data. And you know, you might have, you might see 200 patients, but one of them might be a biology professor at a, at a, at a um, biology professor probably already know, but let's say a history professor at a local college, and they may want to know, hey, so tell me why I have to do this, or why do I feel so bad? You gotta know the things that you're telling your patients, you know, you tell them just, you tell them enough to get, to get a buy, but if they ask that next level question, you gotta have the knowledge back up to tell them why. So I, I really kind of passionate about this, just because of, I wanna know the why in what we're telling our patients, because we gotta be honest all the time, but sometimes you've got to get in depth with them. And uh, this is, I feel like this is a good representation of that. There's a lot of really good ones online too. So anyway, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Make sure you like, subscribe, comment. Uh, I have some recent comments. I just went over a thousand subscribers, which is awesome. Um, had some comments about some vent settings recently. I think in the last couple of days. So I'll try to get into some ventilator settings, some normal uh, alarms on the vents versus NBRC alarms, and we know how the NBRC hospital is. Um, they're tight, they must be answer alarms all day long. But, uh, but uh, we'll, we'll talk about those, uh, hopefully in the upcoming weeks. Thanks for watching.